Welcome to section 4.1 on the area and distance problems. This is part one of this lesson. So a method for finding area, right? We know the area of a rectangle, the length times the width, and the area of a triangle being one half times the base times the height, right? And as I have here on the bottom right corner, we can find the area of, area of any polygon by dividing it into triangles and then adding the areas of each respective triangle once we have those different side lengths and the height as well for us to calculate that. So the whole point of that being we could break the area up into much nicer um, much nicer shapes for us to use to calculate the area. So, for example, let's say we wanted to find the area under a curve. We call it, we could call it region S that lies under the curve Y is equal to F of X, like in this picture in the bottom right hand corner. And it's existing from point A to point B on the X axis, right? So we have a clearly defined area with those specific specifications. So we can approximate this region S by, um, in this particular case, rectangles would fit better than uh, triangles. So we can use rectangles to find this and then take the limit of the sum of the areas of the approximating rectangles as we increase the number of rectangles. Since as you could probably presume, right, if we just started to, um, based upon this particular shape, if we start drawing rectangles on it, I'm going to start doing right now, you can see that, well, the ones that I'm currently drawing, they do attempt to approximize, approximize the area on here. But you could see based upon whatever shape that we have involved in these, um, the area can increase or decrease, right? But the idea of it is if we have a certain I shouldn't say a certain number per se, but if we start increasing the number of rectangles, we'll start getting a better approximation of this area. Ah, so that whole entire thing there. Um, once we start decreasing the number of, uh, excuse me, increasing the number of rectangles, decreasing the sizes, we could start approximating the area underneath that bar. Since as you can see from the rectangles I just drew, some are above the curve, some are underneath it. So we get an approximation, not an exact calculation. To help further show this, let's use rectangles to estimate the area under the parabola y is equal to x squared from the values of zero to one. So we have a region S in the upper right hand corner. We have eh, Y is equal to X squared here in blue, that curve. And we go from zero to one. And that's our region S. So we could break that region S up into, in this case, four rectangles. One method for doing so, which is the method I tried to show on that picture on the last slide, is by using the, um, excuse me, in contrast to what I did on that last slide, we could use the right endpoints to draw rectangles like in this bottom right hand corner. So this area would be based on the four right endpoints. So you could see that going on in this picture, right? We have here the width, um, the width of each of these rectangles being a value of one fourth between each of these points. So because of that, uh, we would add one fourth each time, but we would need to multiply by the height of each rectangle. So for example, this first one, um, it stops here at the value here of one fourth, but since we're calculating it based on that right end point, we need that the value of one fourth squared based on the parabola we have graphed here. So this would be times one fourth squared for this first right end point. For the second one of one half, that'll be of course one fourth times a half squared again, plus the third one 
ending at the right end point at 3 fourths. So plus 1 fourth times 3 fourths squared plus this last one ending at 1 all the way up over here. That will be 1 fourth times 1 squared. Multiplying, adding, and whatnot, we get 15 30 seconds which gives us a value of 0 0.46875. And as you could see, since this function's increasing from left to right, let me make a note on that for this, increasing from left to right, we could see that our rectangles are consistently above our curve based on the picture that we drew here. So because of this, this area that we just found of 0 0.46875, that's going to be an upper bound on the true area. So it's no greater than 0 0.46875, based upon what we see here. So in contrast, this uses those right endpoints. We could do the same thing, but in this case, using left endpoints. And you can see that going down in this graph on here. So this is those four left endpoints. We take, notice how this first one here now um, is essentially no longer um, having much of any height on it due to the fact that we are using those left endpoints now and we have it directly on zero here. Um, so this is going to be one fourth because we still have the same distance of one fourth between each of these. But since we're using the left end points, this first one here starts at zero. So zero squared plus a fourth times the second one um, starts at one fourth. So one fourth squared plus a fourth times the third one starts over here at one half. So times a half squared, and this one ends at three fourths squared. So one fourth times three fourths squared, based now on these left endpoints. And this gives us seven thirty seconds, or 0 0.21875. By contrast, right, we could see that these left endpoints since this function is increasing from left to right, um, they consistently underestimate this as opposed to overestimate like we saw with the right endpoints. This one has these white spaces in here that doesn't count. So this is on the lower end of our area, lower bound of 0 0.21875, being less than our true area. And again, we had our upper bound of 0 0.46875. 875. So the true area must lie between each of those values, right? One way that we could go through this and actually get something meaningful is to start increasing the size of each of these strips, right? So this is just based on four. And as you can see, four doesn't really do that good of a job. Um, the pictures I have here in the upper right-hand corner, this uses eight, uh, eight strips of rectangles. And as you can see, right, the overestimation and underestimation is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, specifically for the one I have here on the screen, the area that we have the bounds between these two, the based upon the left endpoints, and this is based on eight rectangles, is 0 0.2734375. That's going to be less than our area of the right endpoints on the other one we have here, being 0 0.3987. Four about. So as you can see, we're getting closer and closer to this true area. Um, we could continue doing this for whatever number of rectangles, right? We could start seeing it as we increase this, right? We're starting to approximate a value, right? You know, we're getting 
within a range here of zero, uh, when we go up to even a thousand strips, which is fun to calculate, but 0 0.3328335, on the lower end, and the upper end of 0 0.3338335. And as we could see here, the true area is supposed to be equal to exactly one third, 0 0.33333 repeating. So as we increase that size of the strip, the number, excuse me, the number of strips that we have, we are approximating that area. So the actual process of this, we need to subdivide S into whatever number of strips that we entail, in this case, N strips of equal width. The width of the inter closed interval A to B will be B minus A. So the width of each strip delta X is B minus A divided by N. And we could see that splits this up into S sub N um, subdivisions of that entire area into each of those strips. Um, and we have those N sub intervals being closed sub intervals being X sub zero to X sub one, X sub one to X sub two, all the way down to X sub N minus one to X sub N. And we can find our right endpoints being X sub one being A plus delta X, X sub two being A plus two times delta X, all the way down to X sub I being A plus I times delta X. In the area of the ith rectangle, if we just choose some value for i, we can find that area as f of x sub i times delta i, uh, delta x, excuse me. And the right endpoints then would add up each of these values of the function at that right endpoint. So f of x sub one, for example, times delta x, all the way down to f of x sub n times delta x. And this approximation, as we increase, as we increase those number of strips, as n increases, the approximations appear to be better and better. Um, as we increase that, and we increase it towards infinity, right? You know, you could see in the pictures I've, I have here, with a strip size of two, it doesn't really describe it too well. We have a bunch of a little extra space, but a whole bunch of empty space. Four does a slightly better job, but still not that good. Um, as we get to eight and then even 12, we could see that the extra and empty spaces are getting smaller and smaller. Uh, this is part one of this area under a curve and distance as well problems. Be on the lookout for part two. And let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.